Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this tutorial will demonstrate how to paint, I call it hopeful snowman. So a snowman looking up at a lantern. I did this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All the colors and brushes that I use for this tutorial are listed in the description. And you see me loading my palette with primary yellow and titanium white and also phthalo blue. Those are the three colors in the background. There's also a little bit of Mars black in the background as well, but I did not load my palette with that yet. I'm using a three quarter inch flat wash brush. And this is a background that has a radiating blended sort of background in a circle direction. And we're gonna start in the upper right area of our canvas. So this is where our light is glowing. So it's going to be the brightest part of the sky. And we're gonna start with just the titanium white. So I'm gonna paint a circle with my brush, about a three to four inch wide circle. It's a relatively thin layer of paint because I have a little bit of water on my brush and that's allowing it to thin out a bit. Then I'm going to load my brush in a little bit of yellow without rinsing the brush out. And I'm gonna kind of extend it on the palette a little bit to allow some of that white to mix with that yellow. So what I wanna do is I wanna blend the yellow into the white, but not all the way. So I'm gonna paint on the outside of that white circle and I'm gonna gently blend that yellow into the white and just go over the part where that yellow and white meet together very softly to work that transition zone, the zone where the yellow transitions to white. Um, but you wanna keep the very, very center of that circle super bright white. And then we wanna work our way outwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab a little bit of more white on my brush and no more yellow, but just a little bit of white. And I'm going to blend that out into a very light yellow. So it actually goes from white to yellow to white again. And the reason why I went to white again is because we need to transition to blue. So that white is gonna help with that transition without it turning too green because yellow and blue make green and we don't wanna to blend to green. So we blended it to white. So I added more white on the outside of that circle. Then completely rinse and dry that brush off to get all the yellow off. On your palette, mix a light blue. So you need about five parts white to one part blue to make a light blue. You see me mixing that on my palette it, just kind of generally bringing those two colors together. I don't always mix my colors all the way so you can see from my brush there's still like white streaks on it and I do that on purpose because I like having it blend on the canvas and that color gives it a little bit more variety. And then I'm going to just very very gently do this. Start on the outside of that white part and gradually blend it in. That transition zone is where that white is and so it's going to blend with that white light blue. Um, you may eventually hit that yellow and it might turn a little bit green in there, but it's not going to turn terribly too green. So if you want to blend it very gently with the yellow, you can. And uh, we can just kind of leave that yellow glow right there. Uh, we don't need that light blue to blend all the way to that yellow. So I'm working that corner up there too. So just be very careful when you go over that yellow. Again, we don't want it to turn too greenish. Unless you like the look of a green glow in the sky, that wouldn't be too bad. So right there, there's just a little bit of green right there, but not too much. And so we have our white in the middle. We have our yellow glow. Our lantern's gonna be painted over that area in a later step. So we're gonna continue painting our sky and our sky is only gonna get darker from here because this is a nighttime painting and so our colors need to get dark here. So I grabbed just the phthalo blue that this time. So just that dark blue. Again, start on the outside of your light blue and work the transition zone very um, carefully. You can even grab, so uh, sometimes I'll grab a little bit of white right there on the tip of my brush and let that white, that titanium white helps a lot with the blending. It makes the color softer. Just be very careful when you get that darker color and you try to blend it in with the lighter color. You don't want that dark to take over our light area, so just only gradually introduce that into the lighter zone. And um, so right here, a little bit too much dark paint in there. So I grabbed some more white on my brush. Could kind of blend it 
some more of that light blue in there and just be very careful in there. Again, I don't wanna grab too much of that yellow if that yellow isn't dry. So I'm just gonna keep working my way outwards with more of the phthalo blue. And just a touch of that blue up there in the corner. Again, our sky just needs to get darker from here. So grabbing more phthalo blue, a little bit of white in there. That white helps with the blending. And also I like the look of it not being blended all the way, if that makes sense. So if there's a little, a few white streaks in there, that's okay. That's just gonna give our sky some more depth and richness in the color. I'm just gonna keep going, keep painting in circular strokes. Obviously our circle is not a full circle now. Um, it's going off the canvas, but you still wanna keep going in that circular direction. So from here on out, for uh, until we get to the edges, I'm gonna use just the phthalo blue. And I'm adding just a little bit of water to that tip of the brush that really helps smooth out that blue. It's a thin layer of paint, so it doesn't need to be thick. And also a little bit of water it helps with the blending because it keeps the paint wet and it helps with the flow so that it could um, glide easier on the canvas. So just adding the water right there on the tip of the brush before you load your color is helpful for that. So I'm just gonna keep painting in a circle. You just wanna kind of imagine this circle that just gets larger and large, larger or think of it maybe as a spiral and it spirals out larger and larger. Um, when you get to kind of the bottom area and when you start working the edges, you want to add a little bit of Mars black on your palette and um, just be really careful with this Mars black because it's such a dark, strong color. It can take over really fast. So you want to add only a very, very small amount of Mars black into the phthalo blue. It will slightly darken your blue. Allow It will allow the outer edges, especially towards the bottom, to be nice and dark. Again, adding little bits of water to the tip of the brush is helpful to get that to flow a bit. Um, just be careful now that your blue is really dark. When you go back and kind of work some of the inner parts, you don't want to have that dark um, be introduced too much into the medium blue area. Um, so just keep gradually adding teeny tiny bits of that black in there. You can even mix the black and the blue on the palette a little bit better so that it um, you have that darker blue to work with. We got cut off from the camera there, um, but this will adjust here in just a second. Um, again, just be careful when bringing that black closer to the middle part. You don't want to overdo the black. So just a very, very small amount of black on the bottom. Um, upper left corner, I wanted that to be a bit darker. So I just grabbed a teeny bit of that black and just kind of um, added that in the corner area. So we have our darkest part of our sky on the outer part and then our bright glow in the middle. So I'm gonna show you something else. If you want that yellow glow to blend a little bit better, um, that paint's dry by now. It's not workable. I can't go back in there and blend it some more. And if I did, it might be a little bit messy trying to do that. So what I'm gonna do here, again, this is optional if you don't feel comfortable doing it. I recommend kind of watching me first before giving it a go. But I'm gonna dry brush some white on here. Um, and by that, what that means is I'm loading my brush with the white and wiping it off with a towel. So it's only a small amount. It's dry brush because it's gonna see through um, some of that color below. But I'm very, very gently just adding some white streaks in there where that yellow glow meets that white, that light blue. And by dry brushing white strokes in this area, it's gonna allow that transition a, a little bit more, um, give it a little bit more of a transition without it turning green. Um, so that's what I'm doing there. Just a few dry brush white strokes in there helps with that glowing transition and just I'm just extending those dry brush strokes out just a little bit more if you want you can extend those dry brush strokes out all the way in your sky but I did not want to do that I wanted a lot of contrast in this painting so we have a super bright glow right where that light is and everything else is supposed to be darker so that's kind of the point um, when you are done with your sky, we can go ahead and do our snow effect. So for the snow, I'm using my toothbrush. I do this with snow and stars and a lot of my paintings. 
Um, I did it in the painting last week, the Aurora Lake painting. So I'm just going to kind of do the same exact thing again. I have the toothbrush. Um, there's already some water on the toothbrush. Um, you want to get a good consistency. So not too thick, not too thin. In fact, what I'm doing right now is a little bit too thin. My splatters got a little bit, um, the, especially the big ones got a little bit wet. Um, so you really want to test that out before you splatter snow all over your canvas because you don't want to mess up all that hard, hard work you did on this sky. Um, so just splatter it with a good consistency. It's like an ink. It's more than a watercolor consistency, uh, thicker than watercolor, but thinner than the tube paint that comes out of the tube. When you're done with this, you're going to need to let this dry and come back to it because the next thing that we're going to do is paint the snow on the ground. So you can take a break and come back or use a hair dryer. So mine is dry now and we're going to do our snowy land area. Um, so with the three quarter inch flat wash brush and the titanium white. Now there's already kind of a white gap on the bottom of my painting, um, but you don't if you don't have that white gap there, you can just uh, paint. Uh, it'll be fine regardless. But you want to just use the tip of your brush to paint kind of a hilly area. Mine is a little bit higher on the right, but it dips down a little bit on the left and then goes up a little bit more. So about three inches high on the right, about maybe an inch and a half on the left, but does not have to be exact. Um, remember, there's a really tall lamppost in this painting, so we want our ground to be very low to the ground on the canvas. So we're just going to paint that area solid titanium white. I'm just taking that, applying a nice thick layer of white. Not too thick though, but enough because we're going to need to blend some blue. So if your blue is still wet on your palette, use a little bit of phthalo blue. Add that to the tip of the brush and um, paint that very, very gradually on the bottom and then blend up. So our snow shadowy area is toward the bottom of the canvas and it's brighter and whiter at the top. So just a teeny tiny bit of blue for that and blend it up. It should blend very gently with that white, especially if that white's not dry, it'll blend nicely. And so there's our snowy ground. We can go back in later and add some texture if we wanted to. Um, but then, so next we're going to do our lantern. So I'm going to do the lantern first and then the snowman so we can get the placement of the lantern right before we add our snowman in this painting. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the lantern in starting with the glass lantern piece at the very top. So you want that to be right where your bright white circle is because that's where the light is glowing. I drew two diagonal lines. I'm going to draw a vertical line in the center. And then this line is going to go a little bit diagonal and so is this. So we have our lantern piece that's kind of positioned at an angle here. And then we have the top part of our lantern. So I'm going to do two more diagonal lines and then a triangular piece at the top. So these diagonal lines are going to meet right there at the top with a small circle at the top. So we can also extend our top piece out a little bit if we want the corners of those to be sticking out like a point. So I can extend those down to a point. So that's kind of overlapping the glass piece. So a simple, simple design. And then you can see where the position of it, it's covering the entire white area of our background. So that's our glow part of the lantern. And then I'm going to extend this part downwards a little bit. So make kind of a rectangular shape that's going diagonal in both directions. And then we are going to need, a, I suggest a um, T-square ruler because if you draw a vertical line, you want it to be very vertical and not like slanted. So I'm going to take my T-square and line it up to where that center of the lantern is. So line it up on the edge of the canvas, find that center point, and then we're gonna do vertical down, and it's gonna be somewhere in the snow. So figure out where the base is gonna be. The base is gonna be somewhere kind of in the middle area of our snowy ground. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start painting it in. So this is a number four round brush and I have the color Mars Black. I'm slightly watering that Mars Black down so that it will be very helpful for flowing the paint. 
um, and I kind of twisted my brush as I loaded that black. Um, so you want your black to be a little bit loose. It's easier to paint um, these smaller fine details when the paint's a little bit looser. I'm going to start at the top and you see me painting that shape in that triangular top piece that kind of overlaps. So basically I'm just painting my that part in solid black, not doing any highlighting or anything like that yet. Just painting in what I drew and then the little circle at the top, paint it that in. Then I'm going to paint the three lines for the glass part of the lantern and you want a very, very thin line for this. So I'm just gonna add just a touch of water to the tip of my brush here and really twist that brush to get that paint right there on the tip of it because we want to create a very fine line. I'm holding this brush very lightly, very loosely doing these thin lines. So those three, those two diagonal lines and then there's that vertical line in the center. And then paint the base piece. That piece is a little bit, um, it's thicker than those thinner lines. So I'm just painting that shape in. And then we'll do the vertical pole. And um, so same thing, we want it to be kind of a thin line, but this one's not as thin as the lines that we did on the glass piece. So you might have to hold your canvas at like a weird angle so you feel um, comfortable doing this vertical line. So I'm just going over that line that I drew with the pencil and the T-square. And I'm gonna make it just a tad bit thicker. I'm gonna go over that line again and just press a little bit harder with my brush so that line comes up a little bit thicker. Then I'm gonna add a little circle to the bottom part of the glass piece. I'm not gonna get very elaborate with the design of this lamp post, just because I know there's gonna be a wreath hanging it and the wreath is kinda kind of um, make it look pretty. So we could add spiral pieces to it and get elaborate with it, but I'm gonna keep it simple. I just did two little circles right there under the base of that. And then we have our bottom piece of our lantern, um, the base of it, the base of the pole. So I'm just going to create kind of a triangular shape. I'm gonna draw that in with my paintbrush or paint that in. The shape in first, the bottom part is curved and I'm just gonna paint that in solid black. There's a little snow, if you look at the final piece, um, there's gonna be some snow at the base of that that'll be covering most of the base. But for now we have that shape filled in. Grab a little bit of white on the tip of the brush and I'm just going to make a little highlight slash maybe that's a little bit of snow right there on the top, kind of a curved line. And I'm just going to do a few little diagonal strokes of that white right there on the base and let and that white blended with the black a little bit. So just a few lines kind of highlighting that base. That black is still wet so that white is just kind of fading out into the black. Grab a little bit more white on the tip of my brush. Just a few pops of highlight in there, maybe on the left side over here, maybe a few strokes of white at the top, a little bit of white right there on the circle. So you can see how it just highlighted a little bit. Um, later on, I'll add some snow that's kind of resting on the top of the lantern, but for now, I'm just gonna kind of let that dry. Next, I'm gonna add some snow on the base of our um, base. <laughs> so on the bottom part of it, I'm just taking my white and I'm adding a lumpy area right there. If your black is like super wet and not dry, you can wait till later to go in and do this. But I'm just, I just added like a lumpy area, um, kind of make it, made it look like it's covering that base a little bit. And then I grabbed a little bit of blue and just added that blue under the white and blended it back up. So next I'm going to draw the snowman in. I will be using a white chalk pencil for this. You can use a regular drawing pencil if you don't have a white chalk pencil. So I recommend you kind of figure out where the top of your snowman's gonna be, so how high it's gonna be. We don't want him as tall as the lantern, so about halfway, the halfway point of the lantern is how tall I'm gonna make my snowman. So I'm just gonna do a basic snowman drawing starting at the bottom. I'm gonna do kind of a rounded, uh, 
circle on the bottom and it kind of rests in the middle area of our snowy land. But I didn't make that circle go all the way. I kind of left it open because the next circle on top of that is going to kind of overlap the bottom one a bit more and it's going to be slightly smaller. And then circle number three, again, slightly smaller than the middle circle. It overlaps the opening part of it. So I can go ahead and draw that full circle in at the top, have that circle go all the way around. Then I'm going to make these slightly darker lines or slightly lighter lines, make them show up a little bit better so you can see. Just going back over my sketchy lines there. And then I'm gonna do the face. So we want our snowman to be looking up at the light, which means our triangle, our nose, is going to be not center, but off center to the right. So I did a triangle and I did just a basic mouth and two little curved lines on each side of the mouth. If you wanted to do a coal mouth, you can do circles for the mouth. And then our eye, so our eye on the right is gonna be above, right on top of that carrot, and then the eye on the left. The eyes are going at an angle. And then for the hat, um, the hat's gonna start a little bit below the top of the circle. So I did kind of a curved line, and then I did kind of a, curve outwards and did the, the base of the hat. The actual part, the top part of the hat, the sides are kind of curved inwards and the top is curved at the top. And then we can adjust this as we paint it in. So that bottom part is curved at the top of the head, it's slightly overlapped at that top of the head, and then a narrow curved shape above for the base of the hat. I can do the arms of the snowman. So I did just kind of two branches, sketched those branches in, and then we have our snowman. I'm not gonna go in and add any more details. In fact, I could have gotten away with just not drawing the face, because we're gonna be painting the face over anyway, but I wanted to get an idea of how I envisioned my painting to look. So sometimes it's nice to draw it in, even if you're gonna paint over it, it's still nice to kind of get a road map of what you're doing here. Next, I will be painting the snowman in, so I loaded my palette with some titanium white. I'll be using this number eight round brush, so it's a bigger round brush than what we used for the lantern. This is the Princeton Velvet Touch round brush that comes in that set that I will link in this tutorial. Um, but what we're going to do is paint, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up with this snowman. So all I'm doing right now is painting in that bottom circle. It's a lumpy circle, it's not a perfect circle. I'm kind of a smushed circle. Um, I'm painting that in solid white. So a nice, good layer coat of white paint. And we'll be doing wet on wet blending here in just a second. But I'm just making sure I get that all filled in. Nice, good coverage. Um, he is situated in the middle of the land there. And I loaded the tip of my brush in a little bit of phthalo blue, a little phthalo blue on the bottom of that brush. And I'm actually going to start with the shadow um, and then the curvy part of the circle. So what I wanna do, just like how we did the shadow in the snowy area on the ground, we just wanna add a little bit of blue and blend it up. So the shadowy part, has is going kind of horizontal and a little bit wavy, but then the curve part has a shadow too. The bottom part of our snowman curve, a little bit of the blue and blend it up into the white. And then I'm grabbing more white because the center part of my circle is bright white, but the outer part is a little bit blue. So we're using that blue to create some shadows in the snow, give our snowman some three dimension so it's not just flat 2D looking snowman. But if you are simplifying this painting, you can definitely just kind of skip the shadowing if you just wanna make a pretty 2D snowman or if you're painting with kids, there's lots of ways you can simplify this. Added a little bit more shadow underneath that circle. And then we're gonna do it again. So I'm gonna repeat that technique again. Didn't rinse my brush off. If there's too much blue on your brush, I would recommend rinsing it off and then starting fresh with the white. But 
Um, there's a lot of white on my brush that that blue's not even really showing up into that white. So I'm doing the same thing. That circle overlaps the bottom circle. Okay, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of that blue on the tip of my brush, right there on the tip without rinsing the brush. And then I did the curve. See how it's overlapping the top one? And then I wanna blend it up. I blend it up just by letting it kind of blend up into the rest of that white. And I grabbed, just did a few little touches right there on the bottom, grabbed a little bit of white and being very careful about it, too much blue and our snowman will be too blue and it'll blend too much into the background. So wiped my brush off so I can get all that blue off my brush. And I'm just going back in here and just adding more white. Strokes are kind of going in a circular direction, but they can actually go kind of an angle direction. Or if you can, if you want, you can kind of have them go expressive, um, different angled directions. And I'm just letting that blend. See, I'm going in an angled direction to kind of help that blend in there. I can do that here too to kind of make that white go um, diagonally a little bit. That helps it sort of blend. It does not have to be a perfect blend. I'm just letting that shadowy blue kind of blend on the left. So the darker part of our snowman's on the left and on the bottom of the circles, and the brighter parts are on the right side and the top right part of the circle. So we wanna keep the top right part of the circles and the right side of the circles, um, the right edges of the circles, bright white. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the head, um, knowing that I'm gonna to have to cover the face, but it's okay, we will be able to draw all that back in. So farewell for now face. Um, I'm just gonna cover that circle with the white. And again, it's overlapping circle number two. So I'm doing, painting that in solid white. The bottom of that circle slightly overlaps middle circle. So painting it in solid and then grab blue right there on the tip of your brush and add that blue on the bottom and blend up circular strokes and angular angular strokes if you want you can grab just a teeny bit of mars black on the tip of your brush. If you wanna go a little bit darker, that's what I did right there. I put a little bit of that Mars Black on the tip. Um, you just wanna be really careful, too much Mars Black and it will take over, but it just added a little bit of gray area, um, different than the blue, gives it some color variation in there. And I'm gonna go back in with my white, just make sure the right part is bright white. Same with right here, making sure that right right part is bright white, blend it back. Um, if you want, you can add a little bit of yellow on the tip of your brush. So there's white on my brush, but I just grabbed a little bit of yellow on the tip of my brush. Um, and I'm just gonna add that yellow. This is primary yellow, uh, the same yellow we used in the background. And just adding that glow color on the right part. So our light from our lantern might be glowing some yellow on our snow. So I'm just taking that yellow and very, very subtly adding that in there. We don't wanna to add too much yellow, just right there on the edges, on the far right edge of our snowman. And then if you accidentally went too far with the yellow or too much yellow, you can always wipe your brush off, add some white to the brush and kind of go back over your yellow with a little bit more of that white to blend it back in. Next, I will be painting the hat, so I'm gonna go ahead and rinse that brush off. You can use the number eight if you want to, but I'm gonna switch to the number four, the smaller round brush, because it's a smaller area we are painting in. So I'm just gonna loosen up my black paint here a little bit with a little bit of water, twisting my brush to get that paint right there on the tip of the bristles. And I'm gonna go ahead and start at the bottom part of the hat, the base of it and fill that in. So what I drew with the pencil is what I am filling in solid with the black. So I'll outline it and then I'll fill it in. Okay, 
this part goes up a little bit higher. So this part's a little bit thinner than the left and right. And then I'll fill in that right part of the hat in. And then I'm painting in that top hat, pe hat piece. So the sides of it curve inwards, the top is curved at the top, doing kind of contouring strokes. So the strokes are going vertical, kind of in the direction of the shape of the hat, just concentrating on filling that shape in and defining that hat shape. I'm going to let this dry a little bit before doing any kind of highlighting to the hat. And so this is burnt umber. This is an optional color for this painting. If you don't want to add brown to your palette, you can use black. We're going to do the arms, the twig arms next. So this is the number four round brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint his arm in. So here's our left arm. I'm just painting over what I drew with that chalk pencil. This is the only time the brown shows up in our palette. So I put it as optional. If you wanted a simpler color palette, you can do these branches with black instead. And this one doesn't overlap as much because it's kind of on the side. Remember our snowman is kind of turned um, facing the light, looking up at the light. Then I'm gonna load my palette with cadmium orange hue. So we will be doing the nose next. We can still see kind of that drawing sticking out, um, but the rest was painted over obviously with the white paint. Um, this is the number four round brush. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of figure out where I wanted that nose to be. It's a little, it's not centered. It's towards the upper right area of the snowman because he's looking up and our nose is going at an angle off the canvas. So you'll notice with this orange that you're not gonna get coverage over the blue area. So a tip for that is to grab a little bit of white on the tip of your brush with that orange. White is going to help give your orange some more coverage. It's gonna make it brighter so it covers your dark background, um, but it's also gonna make your orange lighter. Um, and then we can go back over with another coat, but because of that white, it's letting it cover that blue. So there's our nose. And then I can shade this in if I wanted the base of the nose to be a little bit darker. Then I could go ahead and rinse off and do the eyes and the mouth next. Loading Mars Black on my four round brush. And I'm gonna start with this eye over here on the right. So this one is right, it's practically almost touching that carrot shape right there. These eyes are going at an angle, so they're not horizontal in line with each other. They're angled because he's looking up. The eyes are kind of a semicircle shape. If you wanted them to be more of a circle, you can have them be more of a circle. This one is partly covered by that top part of the carrot, so it's not going to be as big as the one on the left. At least we don't see all of that eye. And then I did a very simple mouth for this snowman. If you wanted coal pieces for the mouth, little circles, you can do that instead of the mouth that I'm going to do. But I'm just going to do a smile. Again, it's on towards the right and little curved lines on each side of that smile. Then I'm gonna do a little shading on the base of the carrot. So without rinsing my brush, there's still black on my brush and I grabbed the orange. Basically, I'm just using the black to shade this. So a little bit of black mixed with orange basically and just did the base and a few little strokes on the bottom and kind of curving it or not angling it outwards. So darkens the orange a little bit, gives it a little bit of a shadow to the nose. Next, I will do highlighting on the hat. So rinse dry, four round brush, titanium white, a little bit of white on the tip of the brush. I'm gonna start by outlining the base part of the hat. 
So I'm outlining that top part of the base. And then on the right top part, a line. And we'll do a curved line right here as well. So basically outlining. I didn't outline the left top part of the hat. And I'm just going to do some white, very, very subtle white lines on the right side of our hat. So I'm taking that white and doing strokes that are curving and kind of fading off. So from the right to the left, each stroke is going in a slightly curved direction. It's not super, super solid. Um, in fact, I only have a little bit of white on my brush, almost like it's a dry brush effect because I can see a lot of that black below to create that highlight. And then I'm gonna go in here and kind of make the top part of his head a little bit wobbly and then add some shadow in there. So I grabbed a little bit more of that blue and I'm going back in there creating a shadow area right under the hat because that, sh that hat would be kind of giving a little bit of a shadow down there. I can just even grab some black here. On this left part, I'm going to go back over that white piece. So on the far left, it's dark on the base of the hat and very, very light dry brush black underneath the hat to create a shadowy area under the hat on his head. And you can add more details to the hat if you want to do like a red or green band to it. You can paint a cardinal on it, a flower. I just simplified it and left it like that. I'm going to do some more details with titanium white and I'm going to go in and do two little dots on his eyes. So kind of on the upper right part of the eyes, two dots. That really gets it so it looks like he's looking at the light because that light's kind of glimmering, sparkling his eyes. So two little dots gives it that effect. A little bit of white on his nose and arms. So snow is kind of piling up in different areas on his arms on his nose and we'll even put some snow on the top of his hat. So I'm just taking that white, kind of making a thick sort of wobbly line on there. And then I'll do white on the lamp itself. So some snow piling up here at the top. Um, this is a really bright white area up here. So you don't really see it that much, but what we can do to kind of combat that is grabbing a little bit of blue and then we can shadow, put some shadow on the bottom of that snow so it kind of shows up better. It's not gonna show up all the way better, but it'll still kind of look like there's snow on top of that lamp. And then if I want, I can go in and put some shadow on um, some of the snow that I painted like on his hat. And I'm, I'm not going to put some shadow on the snow that's on his arms. I'm going to go ahead and do the buttons next. So we'll get some fresh Mars black on here. And I'll do three coal buttons. Um, in the right part of that middle circle. So starting at the top little wobbly circle and they're kind of going in a curved direction. So this one's gonna kind of go this way and this one's gonna kind of go more to the left. And then I'm gonna wipe the brush off. I could rinse it if I wanted to, but I just wiped it off real quick. Little highlight on these buttons, just a little white stroke on the right side of each of those buttons and go ahead and rinse. We're gonna do the scarf next, and the color I used for the scarf is Hooker's Green Hue Permanent. It is also the color that I'm gonna use for the wreath as well. You can do a different color scarf if you don't wanna do a green scarf, so load your palette with the green. Um, using the number four round brush again here, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint the scarf in right under the head area, so kind of paint between the top circle and the middle circle, and I'm just curving that stroke, making a thick sort of scarf. If you need to overlap the top button, I ended up having to overlap my top button. Um, that's okay. I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. I'm just gonna take that white and kind of blend it a little bit into the green. You only need a tiny bit of white for the blending because it's such a small area. So don't load a lot of white on your brush. I'm letting that blend gently with the green to give it some color variation. 
and I'm gonna do the flyaways. So the wind is blowing in this painting, so we're gonna have this scarf kind of going curvy down and going kind of blowing in the wind. So we have one piece hanging down and then another piece hanging down, blowing in the same direction. Grabbing a little bit of white, kind of mixing that green with the white on the palette because right here I am doing the little uh, frilly things on the edge ends of the scarf. So I'm doing little very thin white lines um, to create that texture. And they're also going at an angle because the wind is blowing. They're going kind of the same angle in the direction of the scarf. And then I can take that white and just kind of gradually blend it with that green a little bit for color variation. Kind of let it blend gently on the canvas. I'm going to go back in here for, with a little bit more of the green. Kind of make this top part a little bit thicker. I don't want to over blend it so I lose the white and it's actually going to overlap that top button a little bit more. Then I'll be demonstrating how I did the simple wreath on our lamp post. So I'll be using the hooker's green and the round brush. And so I'm going to basically start by painting a circle underneath our lamp post. So there's our circle. And then I'm going to take the circle and extend it outwards. So I'm going to do textured strokes going outwards from that circle. So I'm doing like little X style strokes going in different directions to create that texture that goes around that circle. Then without rinsing my brush, I'm gonna grab some white, kind of drag it out on the palette some more so it's a very light green. And I'm just going to take this and do, again, another layer of the textured strokes with that white slash light green. And not covering all that green completely, just another layer. Then I can grab some more of that green and maybe add a few more darker strokes in there. Again, try not to over blend. Uh, we like the color variation in there. So that's the base of our wreath. I'm gonna rinse and dry. I'm gonna introduce Naphthal Crimson. You can use any red for this. This is just the red that I grabbed. It does not have to be this exact shade of red. Um, but I'm gonna do little red berries in there. That's if your wreath is dry. Mine is relatively wet, but it was able to take these little red dots. If it's super thick and uh, not dry, wait for it to dry, then you can come back and do this step. But all I'm doing with the red is just little dots along the wreath. Then I'm going to do a bow. So a very, very simple bow, two loops on the bottom of our wreath. And then it's windy, so the little pieces hanging down must go down at an angle, the same angle as our scarf, because that's the direction the wind is blowing. And then I'm gonna do just a little bit of highlighting with titanium white. I'm very, very subtly outlining the left part of the pole very, very thin line. We don't want to take over that black because uh, we don't want to lose that contrast in that pole, but just a very, very subtle white line along the pole. And I'm just kind of adding a few white lines to the top part of the lamp post. And we're going to do the snowflakes next. So uh, we can do some very, very basic snowflakes. This is the titanium white and the four round brush. The tip of my brush is what I'm using to create these thin lines. This can also be achieved with a white paint pen if you have a white paint pen or even like a really small detail brush if your brush doesn't have a point like this. 
but basically when I do snowflakes, I just do like an X and then um, two vertical and two horizontal lines. So I do an X and then horizontal line, vertical line, and then on the end of each of our lines, there's like a little diagonal carrot sort of shape. So diagonal, diagonal, little diagonals on the ends of each of those lines. And then in between, more diagonals. You don't have to do the diagonals on the in-betweens, but that just kind of adds more detail to it. So you can go ahead and do snowflakes all over the canvas. Um, the, all the snowflakes don't have to look the same. You can make them all different. You can do different designs and types. I'm going to make mine relatively similar. So just as many as you want. This really adds to the whimsical, magical effect of this painting. So maybe the ends of some of them can be dots instead of little diagonals. You can also do little circle snow dots. So I know we did the toothbrush splatters earlier, but we can make some bigger snow dots in the sky. And then I had a snowflake over here where the brighter area is. The snowflakes don't really show up where that bright glow is, but you can have them kind of overlapping that transition area. So it shows up um, very subtly, I guess that adds a nice effect. Um, something else that you can do that really adds to the whimsical effect of this painting is to do the blurry dots. So that's basically just kind of making a dot and then taking your finger and making it blurry it really adds a magical whimsical effect to the, our, our night snowy sky. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just do a dot, take your finger and smear it. Take a dot, finger, smear it. You can do that kind of all over. Um, doing this right here, the light, doesn't really make much of a, an effect if you wanted to have the light bulb showing because it's so bright right there, there's really not much more we can do to that. So I just kind of tested that out there. Um, but just adding some more blurry dots kind of all over. I decided I wanted to touch up my scarf a little bit more. So that's what I'm doing here. Adding just a little bit more white to the top part. And what I also want to do is add some more texture to the ground. This is optional. It's just a, a little extra detail. I'm going to take the white and add some kind of wavy sort of long loose strokes on the ground so it's not entirely a smooth gradient it's got some texture on the ground maybe make my hill a little bit kind of a little tiny bit more lumpy at the top these are just some very subtle final touches to the painting. But that is basically it, my friends. This is the conclusion of Hopeful Snowman. I hope that you enjoyed painting with me too. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.